Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. My name is Sergey, and I was born in the USSR. One of the ways you can support this channel is by buying my book, American Diaries 1995. It's available in Russian or English. You can purchase it on Amazon.com or send me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you. Today we're going to talk some more about life of the disabled people in the Soviet Union and actually today's video I will uh, answer your questions that you guys posted in my previous video on that topic. The first question about uh, uh, disabled people treated in the Soviet Union by the government's people, blind, death, lost arms and legs, spinal injury and so forth. I kind of answered a little bit in my first video and then uh, was there any disabilities um, help for them? Braille markings, closed captioning for TV broadcasts. As far as I know, we didn't have really anything uh, to help disabled people. We didn't have anything like here in America. I know there's no little like, if you want to cross the road, there'll be a gentle ramp, not the bump to get off the sidewalk. I believe in 70s, they had a law that required uh, any place of business or school or college to be handicap accessible so people can roll in and out using a wheelchair. We never had anything like that. Our public transportation was basically inaccessible to anybody who is handicapped. I mean, people would uh, help somebody to toss him inside of the bus or the tram, but otherwise we had nothing. All right, next question. Sergey, I instantly thought about making a wheelchair using bicycle wheels and then realized that I hadn't seen any bicycles in your pictures. Were there many in the USSR? Actually, if you're interested in the topic of bicycles in the Soviet Union, I recorded one video so far. It's called I like to ride my bicycle in the USSR. Uh, you can check it out, go on my playlist, or I can post the link below this video. Yes, we had quite a bit of uh, bicycles in the Soviet Union. Not that many in the big cities, that was mostly like for kids, since when you live in the uh, tall apartment buildings, it was a big challenge to drag your bike on your ninth floor. I mean, you had elevator, but good luck to, you know, put the full-size bike in there, so mostly kids. Uh, some people rode bikes for recreations, and that's actually how my very first bike was stolen. I just became too lazy to drag it through my apartment all the way to the balcony. So I stored it outside our apartment by the trash collector and I did it for about a week and then someone noticed it sitting there without lock and uh, my bike disappeared. Now in the villages, bicycle was pretty much the major uh, mean of transportation. Pretty much every household had uh, one or two bikes, usually one. I remember a couple of families had two. One was lady style uh, because you couldn't own horses uh, motorcycles were expensive, cars were extremely expensive, so that was how the villagers would um, ride the bike to the store to purchase um, groceries. Uh, people moved hay on their bicycles and they went mushroom hunting, uh, all kinds. Uh, that was quite impressive what you can do with the bike if you utilize this, you know, it was not even a cargo card, but yeah, there was a lot of bicycles out in the country, but not many in the big cities. And I just found out that actually we did manufacture uh, wheelchairs, kind of bicycle type wheelchairs in the Soviet Union. Uh, but like one of the largest bike factories in Minsk or Kharkov, I mean, they were cranking out probably hundreds of thousands of bikes per year, but they made one of those factories made 700 three-wheeler bikes for handicapped people. So 700 for the largest country in the world that went through the World War II. So this huge factory made only 700 bikes. So apparently there was a huge shortage of that type of bikes uh, for the handicapped people. I'm going to make a separate video about it. Next question. Comrade Sergei, uh, why do you think USSR did not build uh, wheelchairs? Or the question of cost? Did the state provide financial support? Also, what about Soviet citizens who had mental disabilities? Was there any state apparatus to provide for them? The short answer would be government planned economy. It's as simple as that. When you have a socialist society, when one ministry plans everything for the economy based on the Communist Party request, 
this is what you get. You can have a Luna Hot robotic uh, vehicle on the moon, and then you won't have any wheelchairs because the Communist Party didn't see it as a priority. Apparently, later on, maybe starting 60s, 70s, uh, they started manufacturing some wheelchairs, but in such a minuscule uh, amounts. So for amount of handicapped people, I mean, we went through the horrible war with Germany. Uh, there was maybe a half of a percent that actually needed. But since we had this culture of uh, pushing, you know, out of mind, out of sight, handicapped people, and uh, there's no surprise that Soviet government didn't bother to invest into taking care of those people. And yes, of course, we did have uh, hospitals uh, for the citizens with mental disabilities. Uh, they called Psychiatrická Balnica. So it's like psychological uh, hospital. And it served dual purpose. Uh, besides people with severe mental disabilities, so-called crazy people, they also being used uh, to lock uh, people who were against the uh, Soviet regime because you're definitely crazy if you're against Soviet regime. So you, you didn't do anything criminal. They will just uh, uh, figure out that I guess you're crazy, so you go to the crazy house. And that's where the people get locked up and uh, heavily seduced uh, with drugs and kept there for years. Okay, next question. Invalid, invalid, not in 100 years I could learn the Russian alphabet. But these words are pretty much the same. Um, it's actually Russian language. If you learn Russian alphabet, which is, you know, just alphabet, you can read Russian really easy. We don't have uh, this weird situation like English has a letter A e can be A or A e or O. Uh, letter bukva A is A pretty much. We don't have this kind of wild changes like letter I can be I or it can be other sound. So in that part, it could be E, you know, it's it's quite easy, but otherwise, yes, Russian language is uh, quite difficult. All right, moving along. Uh, the disabled people in England were going no better at that time. You know, I, I'm getting such comments all the time, pretty much for all my videos is, well, in America, same thing happens, or England, same thing happens. A lot of it was about uh, Nisuni, people that were stealing stuff from the factories. Comrades, you need to remember, we're comparing two totally different societies. Socialist society, where everything was for people, and capitalist society, when everything was for the profit and for the corporations. So when you say, well, disabled people in England were not doing any better, of course, you had profit-driven society that didn't care about regular folk, didn't care about poor people, and then you have a Soviet Union when everything was for the people. Wink, wink. So this comments kind of make me smile. This is the whole point that a lot of people thought that Soviet Union, because of government was taking care of its people, uh, life for everyone was much better. We didn't have, uh, I want to say poor people, we didn't have rich people. We had <laughs> pretty much had everyone poor. What a shame that the Soviet Union did not do anything for its handicapped war veterans. The government was all about appearances to its own people and to the outside world. The irony that Soviets went to, into space yet at the same time was so far behind in its social programs for its lower class. Unfortunately, uh, those are side effects of the central plan economy. I bet you it's, uh, Comrade Khrushchev's uh, son was handicapped and he would be complaining that he's having a hard time, you know, getting into the stores or and that his friends having a hard time. There's a quite a possibility that Soviet Union will be number one in the world taking care of its handicapped people. Or they maybe his son will be taken care of. They might purchase some cool wheelchair from America or England and it will it will stop. But that's the problem with the central plan economies. Uh, if there's no priorities, there'll be no product. In the same time, uh, Nikita Khrushchev thought that it's very important to show the world that we can beat America in space, and we did. And, you know, that pride will stay for years and hundreds of years, but, you know, a handicapped person going to die eventually, and everyone will forget about him. 
It takes a great deal of insecurity to exclude people with disabilities from world consciousness due to perceived weakness. That's the great point. I think it's the... I uh, can't find the word, but... Quite similarity we notice in Nazi Germany, right? So totalitarian regimes, they don't want to look weak, so they ignore or even kill their weak to appear strong. I mean, we can look back all the way like Spartans, right? They're so famous uh, warriors, but at the same time, they killed all their children that showed any disabilities. Hey, Comrade Cheeseburger. I remember you saying something about a car specially made for invalid people. So instead of wheelchair, that invalid should have gotten a car from the state. You're correct. I actually had the whole video dedicated to Invalidka uh, car. Really uh, interesting uh, device. You guys are welcome to check it out. I'll post the link below this video. Actually, technically it wasn't a car. It was a quadricycle. So it's a four-wheeler uh, that looks like a car with a tiny 12 horsepower engine and my guess they didn't make them enough because I saw them in the cities once in a great while I mean you could hear it first way before you see it but I don't think it was any uh, off-road capacity so in the villages they were totally useless I didn't see a single Invalidka car out in the country Hopefully in your next video you will touch on the plight of the differently abled children who were often abandoned in the hospital by their mothers and sent off to orphanages. Can never can say the word correctly. And some of those disabilities were so minor, but due to the superstition and ignorance, ignorance uh, just sent away from the perfect society. Honestly, I don't know anything about that. Uh, but I recall my mother uh, mentioning when she was uh, uh, in the hospital uh, giving me a birth. Uh, they had a young lady in their room. I mean, there was like six or ten uh, women in the same room. So, you know, uh, giving birth and having children. Uh, so as long as she uh, popped the baby, she stayed there for extra two, three days, and then she just left. Uh, so that was a pretty, I'm going to say, robust system. It was quite easy to... Uh, refuse a child you just tell them I don't want to keep the child and uh, there was I guess minimal paperwork because the her boyfriend was uh, outside waiting and she just uh, left her child cute little baby and uh, that's it but you also need to keep in mind that Soviet people were generally quite poor both had to work both could barely afford things and then, of course, you know, like, you need to go back to work three months after you had a baby. So then what are you going to do with the baby? Then you have a really, you don't want to bring your kid. Like, I don't remember anyone in my um, uh, kindergarten that was anything like handicapped even slightly. And I don't think you'll be treated nicely by the kids. So you have this perspective of a long struggle. Uh, so a lot of people probably just, made that hard choice is like we, we may have a try for another kid we just can't afford uh, to have a handicapped kid next comment i can understand soviet union saying we have no invalids like born that way and weakness in genes like nazis denied they had weakness that's why soviet union also superior so silly but how could they deny injuries from war cause could cause this this person should have been honored high esteemed gave up so much. Well, all I can add to Lynn's comment is the attitude towards World War II veterans and especially handicapped veterans changed quite a bit uh, with leaders. So for example, during the Brezhnev era, uh, there was a quite a resurgence in memories uh, and taking care of in, uh, veterans because Brezhnev wanted to be praised for his participation in the war. So he was given the medals left and right. Um, they started giving cars away more generously. But before that, like Julian Stalin era, and I need to make separate videos on that topic, like he was quite disappointed the way the war turned out. And he blamed a lot on his people, on his soldiers, because 1941, 1942, um, Right now, modern historians are trying to analyze and understand what happens. It's pretty much like we had superiority in everything, in numbers of soldiers, in tanks, airplanes. Like Soviet army was the largest army 
in Europe in 1941. We had more tanks than Germany, England, America, and everyone else combined. More airplanes than everyone else combined. And at the same time, we were, were just destroyed. So it looks like almost Soviet soldiers didn't want to fight. So Stalin was not happy with performance. Even he won the war, the losses were so staggering. The uh, just was pathetic performance on the Soviet part. So I think it's one of the reasons why he didn't care all but about his veterans and especially about handicapped veterans. Invalid is used in English too and is from Latin validus meaning strong and in prefix means not, I believe. That's correct. Um, when I looked it up, uh, the Russian version of uh, origins of the word invalid, it says that it came uh, to Russian language from French language and in turn it came to French from Latin and it says invalidus means not strong. Well, this comment is quite long, so you guys can pause the video if you want to read the whole thing. But basically, uh, the person says that he lives right now with Russian fam family in Russia. Uh, and asked my Russian wife, where are the disabled people? Why isn't current infrastructure built to accommodate people with uh, physical disabilities? Which is a great question. This is continuation of situation in the Soviet Union, actually. Okay, uh, I just a quick comment. Uh, who runs modern Russia? There's no new generation of leaders in the Russian government. Comrade Putin, it's a former communist, former KGB officer, or he never can be former KGB officer. So this whole mentality, whole attitude towards disabled people remain the same. And unfortunately, although oil prices were fantastic for a long time and Russia made billions of dollars, they never bothered to improve infrastructure. Actually, the whole Russian economy in large, they still live off remnants of the Soviet economy and that economy infrastructure, I want to say, and it's slowly disintegrating because they don't provide really good upkeep. Uh, so yeah, there's no surprise uh, that modern Russia has no uh, things done for the handicapped people. Next question. I wonder if Soviet war veterans always wore their medals and military decoration as shown in many photos. Of course not. Uh, most of these pictures were taken during official um, holidays. Mostly, I would say, May 9. It's the Soviet uh, Victory Day, which is celebrated every year. Pretty much when Brezhnev uh, became the leader of Soviet Union, that's when they started doing this uh, May 9 parades. Before that, we had no parades for the Victory Day, believe it or not. So that'll be the main occasion to put medals on is May 9 celebration or October Revolution celebration or if the veteran is trying to get uh, something from the government he goes to some of uh, office then he put all his medals uh, to show that he deserved uh, whatever he's asking for. Did the Soviet Union have a veterans pension or veteran hospital system? How were disabled people from their Soviet wars like Afghanistan treated? Yes, we had a veterans pensions. I need to dig into the topic because uh, I honestly don't know much about it. My grandfather, Sergei, uh, he was a soldier during World War II, prisoner of war, but I don't recall uh, for him to have anything additional payments. Um, so I need to find out more about it. But yes, we did have a military hospitals. They weren't called uh, veterans hospitals. So if you get wounded, you go first to the military hospital and then later may be treated normal hospital uh, so yes we had pensions but I don't think there were anything that great and uh, that you can uh, have a good lifestyle out of them well thank you so much for watching this video as always please don't forget to uh, put like for my video story share with your friends in social media and we'll talk to you soon до свидания goodbye
Hey, by the way, a cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. Just a friendly reminder that my book American Diaries is available on Amazon.com or shoot me an email if you would like to have a signed copy. Thank you. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union.